Great. And um, today's uh, webinar will be recorded, so there will be um, access to it afterwards, so you're, so you're aware that it can be recorded and it, you can be shared. And I think we'll just get started and go. Um, so my name is Leanne Weber, and I am the Director of Communications at Scenic. And I want to welcome you to our Broadband Infrastructure Grant BIG program webinar. And thank you for taking your time today. Um, you're going to learn a little bit about Scenic and some of the expectations and conditions um, for participation in the program. Scenic is a nonprofit, 501c3, um, and our mission is since founding um, over well, almost 25 years ago is to advance education and research statewide by providing a world class network that's essential for the innovation, collaboration, and growth in California. Um, we are governed by our members. And they are segments that are all of the K-12 system, the community colleges, the state university system, Stanford, Caltech, USC, uh, University of California, uh, the public libraries, and the Naval Postgraduate School. Some key facts about Scenic, we have over 8,000 miles of optical fiber. We have member sites in all 58 counties that connect to that fiber directly to Scenic's backbone. Um, we have over 12,000 sites that connect um, within the 58 counties, and um, we collaborate with over 750 private sector partners, um, contributing over 100 million to the California economy. There's a lot of benefits to, the, to uh, being a member of Scenic, and some of them um, that are more uh, relative to being a K-12 are that you have unlimited broadband monthly, there's no data cap, you have access to a state-of-the-art network, um, we will uh, provide network design expertise for your big connection, we are federal and state subsidy assistance, we offer that, and we um, can, because we aggregate um, our costs and we can leverage Scenic's high volume purchasing power, you will receive lower costs on circuits and equipment. Um, Scenic understands the different needs of all of our communities and among them, the importance of K-12's California assessment of student performance and progress testing. Before, um, the BIIG program and a lot of schools in California were connected to the CalRAN backbone. There were schools that couldn't even offer school testing. At this point now, um, testing happens um, simultaneously for almost 600,000 students. And the testing is monitored real time by our engineers and there's problem solving going on. So there's never any um, downtime with the tests. And at this point, I would like to introduce Kim Lewis, our Director of Government Relations to you to tell you a little bit about the BIG program and the previous BIIG program, which is wrapping up. Thank you, everyone. Um, good afternoon, Kim Lewis. And as Leanne said, I am the Director of Government Relations for Scenic. As we are all too aware, the pandemic has only further elevated the importance and need for robust broadband in our communities. We are pleased to share with you additional information on the state-funded Broadband Infrastructure Grant Program, referred to as BIG throughout this presentation, which was created in 2019. I'm going to share a little bit about the history of how we got here, some information um, about the program, including what funding um, it will pay for. Following me, some of the other scenic staff that have been working on the BIG program um, and who are some of the contacts going forward will be um, speaking with you and sharing some additional details. Um, I'd just like to note that we will have time at the end of this presentation to address any questions that may arise. So please feel free to um, drop any questions that come up during the presentation in the, the Q&A or, or chat box. 
So the Broadband Infrastructure Grant Program builds on the success of the Broadband Infrastructure Improvement Grant Program that began in 2015. We recognize that these are two very similarly named programs, yet these are their statutory titles, and as such, we are just being consistent with state law. While the Broadband Infrastructure Improvement Grant Program focused on the need for sufficient broadband capacity for the state's move to online testing, the big program is funded to provide fiber-based broadband connectivity to the most poorly connected schools in California to enable digital learning opportunities for students. And the first thing Scenic was tasked with doing in this project was to identify those schools. The big program is focused on those public schools offering K through 12 instruction who do not have a fiber-based broadband connection. In order to maximize the limited amount of funding that was provided, as well as to comply with the implementing trailer bill, the program looks to maximize federal subsidies using the schools available to schools using the Universal Services Fund program known as E-Rate, as well as the state's Universal Service Subsidy Program for Schools known as the California Teleconnect Fund. An exciting benefit of the federal rules are that they provide for an enhanced level of funds when state dollars are dedicated or matched specifically for this type of activity. I'm hoping that everyone is aware and familiar with the E-Rate and CTF program, but for brevity's sake, uh, the E-Rate program requires a competitive bidding process. So for BIG, Scenic included 74 sites representing 23 counties on the BIG RFP solicitation that was issued in late 2020. Next slide. For a deeper dive on these two programs, this slide provides a, a nice side-by-side -side comparison of them. The Broadband Infrastructure Improvement Grant was created under Governor Jerry Brown when the state of California moved to online K-12 student assessments. The first year provided almost 27 million in funding, and the following year, based on the success of the initial suite of funding, the governor and legislature not only provided another round of funding, but almost double that amount available. It was administered by our friends at the K-12 High Speed Network, who contracted with Scenic to support the implementation of the Broadband Infrastructure Improvement Grant these connections were technology neutral, meaning they could have been a fiber or fixed wireless connection as the goal of the program was different, right? It was focused on ensuring that students were able to take their online test. Altogether, over 430 sites were awardees and we are just finishing up the final stages of wave five and connecting these sites. Now the big program, which is why we are all here today, was created in 2019 as part of Governor Newsom's leadership to focus on broadband connections that were fiber-based or future-proof, as some might say. And this was even before the pandemic. The initial funding amount was 7.5 million for this project to identify schools lacking fiber broadband connections and to connect them. We have great news as our general understanding of the recent budget framework is that an additional 5.2 million will be provided for the big program so that all sites identified through Scenic's RFP process will be able to receive funding for a broadband fiber connection to their school. Governor Newsom and the legislature are working to bring broadband for all to all of California, and this program supports that vision. Next slide. With the big funds, we wanted to take a few moments to cover the benefits of participating in this program so your school, district, and county office of education can become familiar with the cost that will be covered by this program. For many schools lacking a fiber-based connection, it is often the one-time cost of special construction that makes it prohibitive for a school. These expenses will be covered by the grant and E-rate subsidies. For site readiness costs, these are items such as space or power, or other requirements that may need to be addressed before the circuit can be installed or get to that minimum point of entry location at your school site. Um, equipment could include like a router or a switch. Um, knowing that a school does not currently have a fiber-based connection, the program anticipates that some level of equipment may be needed at the school site to receive the circuit. 
Further, um, some schools may not have technical staff to support the activities needed to integrate the service, uh, and these costs may be provided. As with broadband service, um, there are monthly bills for the cost of the circuit. The big program will pay from six to 18 months of those reoccurring costs. Um, this is a range of time as it really depends on the timing of the installation of the circuit, um, as well as ensuring that the transition or supersedure process aligns with the federal E-rate process. Um, one of my colleagues will touch on this piece further on in the presentation, so I'm not gonna get into it right now. Uh, we know BIG is a one-time grant program and the ongoing recurring cost of services will need to be supported by the school site. Fortunately, Scenic will also be providing E-rate consultation to ensure that the cost borne by a school continues to maximize you know, the E-rate and CTF discount subsidies. Next slide. Um, while the BIG program, go back one. Um, we'll be providing a tremendous benefit and covering the cost of bringing fiber-based broadband to your school site. Given the limited funding available for this program, we wanted to make a note of other costs that could come up and may need to be considered by each site. Uh, as noted in the first bullet and dependent upon the policies of your county or district, uh, there may be annual or monthly fees for ongoing support of the connection. Other equipment that your school may need to think about are things such as firewalls um, or other local area network devices, maybe wireless access points, for example. Uh, through some of our past experiences working to connect our vast membership, we want to just highlight the importance of it is to be thorough and accurate with the information provided to us. For example, if a school decides later on in the project that they want to build a new server room and change the location of where the service circuit could go, um, those change order costs will not be covered by the grant, unfortunately. Um, another example could be additional reconfiguration you may need to support your local internal network needs. After installation and integration of your circuit, Scenic will notify the service provider that your school site will be able to call them directly for support. Ongoing troubleshooting and dealing with outages will need to go directly to that service provider We'll make sure you have all the information needed to do so. As noted, we just wanted to highlight the potential additional costs depending on your local circumstances. So there really is ample time and opportunity to plan accordingly. Um, I now would like to turn my presentation over to my colleague, Jamie, who will share a little bit more about how the 74 sites included on Scenic's RFP were identified. Thank you so much. Hi, I'm Jamie Oggs, the Scenic's Research Specialist. Uh, I'm going to tell you a little bit about how we came to choose the different sites or um, this is a multi month process to begin scenic was provided with a list of potential sites that was compiled from various sources, including the Cal California Department of Education, K 12 HSN data link and education superhighway. This was an attempt to identify sites that did not currently have fiber optic broadband to their lo location. Scenic then added to that list by reaching out to all 58 county offices of education to identify and learn more about underserved schools in that county. Through these efforts, a list of 1,276 sites were identified. Scenic's team went through and validated each site proposed, ensuring that sites met the parameters sent forth by the big steering committee. All sites needed to fall within the parameters outlined here. As you can see, only sites that met the following parameters moved forward, specifically sites that needed that served the K-12 population as such institutions that were exclusive to adults, preschools, or ROPs, or similar programs were omitted. Eligible sites needed to meet CDE's definition for a traditional public school run by an elected board of directors or superintendent. Sites also Sites that received BIIG funds were also not eligible at this time. In addition, and specific to this program, sites also needed to have an internet connection that was not fiber-based or co-located with an existing fiber connection, and that was confirmed by their COE. This process also identified sites, seven to be specific, that were not originally identified. In total, 850 sites were deprioritized in phase one, and 359 sites were deprioritized in phase two, while seven were added. 
Next slide, please. As noted, 74 sites were included on FCC's Form 470, which opens the competitive bidding process known as the Request for Proposals or an RFP. The FCC requires that Request for Proposals remain open for 28 days. During this time, service providers were able to bid on locations that they were willing and able to service for the fiber broadband connection. During this time, 42 unique sites received bids for fiber connections to their locations. Seven sites were able to piggyback on a site bid and be included as a co-location to that site, allowing both sites to be eligible for a fiber connection from the district office or COE. Initially, when half of the sites did not receive bids from service providers, primarily due to their rural location. In an attempt to remedy this, the scenic team reached out to providers that we work with in those areas to reassess their ability to service particular sites. We're happy to report that several additional bids were made through this process, leaving only 17 sites that providers were unable to reach. This communication also revealed that four sites already had a fiber connection. Of the eight sites that were removed from consideration, the remaining four sites reached out to Scenic to report that they did not require a big BIG rather, fiber connection and already had sufficient broadband. In conclusion, we're happy to be discussing the next steps for eligibility with 49, 49 different school sites of whom serve 16,580 California students. These sites have been identified to receive a fiber broadband connection through the program. I'm gonna turn it over to Susan to tell you what steps need to be completed to begin the connection process. Thanks, Jamie. Hi, so my name is Susan Swank. I am one of the project managers for the BIG program. And uh, like Jamie said, I will be reviewing the next steps to participate as well as the process for the delivery of your fiber connection. So in order for us to proceed with the service providers and the program, we require a few items from you, the organization, the sites that are potentially participants. Firstly, uh, we have the memorandum of understanding. So this kind of touches on what Kim was speaking to before. So this is also called an MOU and will often be referred to as an MOU, but it stands for Memorandum of Understanding, and it will be provided by Scenic to your site, and it will uh, be the agreement for the transfer of contract after the site has the service has been integrated. So it's an agreement to pay the ongoing costs, the monthly recurring costs from the service provider, and this is it. Uh, process known as the procedure, and we will get into it a little bit more in a later slide. So just uh, sit tight on that one. And then secondly, we will require contact and site information, uh, very uh, high level site specific information in order to be able to place orders with service providers. We need to have your contact information and some basic information about your site. This, uh, some of you guys probably already answered this. These were, uh, the, the link to this is also in the webinar, but it was included in the email that was sent out in order to register for participation. And then lastly, this is gonna be an ongoing process and we will need to ensure consistent communication between both parties um, or all parties rather. And so we will be, consistently reaching out to you, but we will also require responses in uh, in response to our questions in order to schedule on-site services or uh, any and provide any updates. So please be sure to continue to CC everybody that is on the email thread to ensure that we, everybody is in the loop and that we are getting everything uh, getting everything going. And uh, if there are any issues that arise, please feel free to reach out to us. Uh, we really appreciate your assistance throughout this process. Uh, so next slide, we can talk about what would come after we get these pieces of information and documents together. 
So we will continue, this will be an ongoing process. We will be working with you guys to collect this information and the memorandum of understanding over the next few months. And then from there, once we have those items, we can place the orders with the service providers, uh, your at and Spectrum, so on. And what will come next is that we will begin site surveys. So these will both be conducted by the service provider and our BIG professional services vendor. Now the BIG professional services vendor, uh, Kim touched on it slightly, but it'll be on-site services that the grant will fund. So these, these uh, parties, the professional services vendor, as well as the service provider, will do a site walk and determine if there are any on-site works required. This is commonly referred to as room readiness or site readiness, and that was already touched on slightly. So that will be an ongoing process once we receive the, the documents required. And from there, we will start on technical reviews. So the technical reviews uh, will be between us and your organization to determine what your needs are from an equipment and configuration uh, perspective. So these will include just to understand what your network support level is and what would actually need to be on site for you in order to accept the circuit. And uh, from there, once those are completed, we will have equipment delivered to your site or your district or county office, whatever we agree upon beforehand. And also if any of the site requirements, any of the room readiness is required, then at this time, it will be completed. Now, uh, as these milestones are being accomplished, Scenic will be working with the service providers to ensure that they are building fiber to your location and things are still proceed proceeding from their perspective. And due to there being limited infrastructure in many of these regions, the timing of this will vary quite a bit. Uh, but we will keep you in the loop about estimated delivery times as we go forward. Uh, so once they have completed their work and the services are completed from their perspective and you have received equipment and the room readiness uh, requirements have been completed as well, BIG Professional Services will assist with the integration of your new fiber connection. So if you guys do not have on-site support for network assistance, then they we will be able to have somebody assist with that and get that up and running. Once these services are installed and integrated, you will begin to begin, you will be able to begin to use your new connection in the fall through winter following your integration the supersedure process will begin and uh, that will be explained on the next slide. All right, uh, so we've said it quite, uh, we've said the word quite a few times, uh, but supersedure in a nutshell is the process of transferring a contract from one party to another. So the initial service provider contract will be between Scenic and the service provider. And then six to 18 months after integration, the, or sorry, the eight, six to 18 months after integration supersedure will transfer the agreement to the signee of the MOU and the service provider. So this process, uh, like I mentioned in the previous slide, will start in fall through December following your integration. Uh, and it will start with Scenic reaching out to both the signee of the MOU and the service provider and to begin the supersedure process. So we will notify you when it is that time to start this process. It's not um, something that you have to keep um, on your radar. We will make sure that we notify you. When we notify you, we will provide all the resources you would need to transfer the contract and to file for your own E-rate services. The remaining activities, uh, numbers three and four, will be handled directly between the site and the service provider. So in order to continue receiving E-rate subsidies on your services, you will be responsible for filing a Form 471 for E-rate compliance with USAC. This due date is typically at the end of March prior to the fiscal year coming. 
and uh, we will provide some assistance and some resources on that as well. So that way it's uh, not just dropping you in there blind. Uh, and then lastly, once everything uh, has been settled with the service provider and the supersedure process has completed, uh, the, tra the transfer of the agreement is effective follow as of July 1, which this is six to 18 months uh, after your install. So uh, for the monthly recurring costs will be invoiced directly to the site starting July 1 following that fiscal year. So that is, uh, I'm gonna turn it over to my colleague, Stella Kwan uh, to handle some of the questions. Hello, my name is Stella Kwan and I am one of the project managers for the BIG program. I will be moderating the Q&A portion of this webinar, but we will first go over some of the FAQs we have regarding the program and then answer the questions that have been asked in the Zoom Q&A. Please continue to add questions throughout this webinar. We will answer as many as, as time allows and then answer any remaining questions via email. Next slide. All right, let's review some of the FAQs regarding this project. If a site already has fiber, is it eligible to receive funds? Unfortunately, if your site has an external fiber connection from a commercial service provider, the school is not eligible to proceed with connectivity through the BIG project. However, some schools have mistakenly identified their connections as fiber when the connections are actually copper-based. These sites remain eligible for BIG and should be brought to the attention of the BIG team. If other sites in the district need fiber broadband assistance, will they be eligible for grant funds? The BIG team is collecting information on sites with low or no connectivity and continue to explore opportunities to connect them. This is based on availability of funding and resources to support future projects. Again, please bring these sites to the attention of the BIG team. Do I need to fill out anything to participate? Yes, as my colleague Susan mentioned, awardees must complete and sign a memorandum of understanding, committing the school to pay ongoing monthly recurring costs, and our survey form to providing general site information and site contact information. The survey form is linked to the, to the webinar email and located in the resources section of the slide deck. When will I know my costs and how were those costs determined? Ongoing costs will be listed in the MOU and are based on quotes from service providers who responded to Scenic's RFP. At this time, the team will be reviewing the questions entered into the Q&A. Please continue entering questions into the Zoom Q&A throughout this webinar. As mentioned earlier, we will answer as many as time allows and then answer any remaining questions via email. So we have a question uh, from David Smith. Uh, the question is, how can we find out who the vendors are in our county? I'll take that one, Stella. So for vendors in your county, uh, when it comes to the service providers, because uh, there's two types of vendors we could be discussing right now. When it comes to the service provider, the vendor that we located in your county was create, uh, found during the RFP bid, and we would be happy to provide that information to you, and it will definitely be provided to you in the MOU. It will tell you which service provider it is. Now, when it comes to the professional services vendor, we will likely be using one vendor for everybody, so that way we can coordinate and uh, from a project program level for everybody. Now, it may be subject to change if uh, we find that you guys have a local resource that you have that has assisted with things like this in the past, but otherwise we will use one centralized vendor for those professional services. All right, um, I believe that was the only question in the Q&A. Um, if there are any other questions, please feel free to send um, an email, which we'll share in the next slide. But um, for now, I just want to look at this screen. Um, oh, sorry, could you go to the next slide, Leanne? Okay, so if you believe any other members of your organization should view this webinar, please invite them to our future webinars, or uh, we will provide a link to view our recorded webinar, um, and we'll provide it on our program webpage, and it will also be on our YouTube page. 
Um, we will also be putting the link in, into the chat box in Zoom where your colleagues can register for upcoming webinars or feel free to forward the information you receive via email. Okay, next slide. So for any additional information or if you have any remaining questions we've not answered in the webinar, please email bigprogram at scenic.org and you will hear back from one of our team members. Um, these are the team members involved in this project, and we will be directly reaching out to you throughout this project. So we have Susan Swank, Stella Kwan, myself, uh, Dave Wills, and Jamie Augst. All right, next slide. Uh, oops, sorry. Okay, here are a few resources if you require any additional information. The first link is the survey form mentioned earlier that each BIG site must fill out. Next slide. So thank you again for your time and we look forward to working with you very soon. So just a reminder, um, we will be um, sharing this and you will get an email from us soon with the links for the materials that can be shared with other colleagues as well. Thank you again for all of your time spent here today, and we're really looking forward to working with you on your BIG connection. Have a good day.